The first rescue teams have made it into flood-ravaged eastern Libya, where officials now say up to 10,000 people are missing. The country's two governments are struggling to respond to this disaster and are pleading with international rescue crews to recover bodies swept out to sea. 36 hours after catastrophic flooding destroyed the ancient city of Derna, help has finally arrived in the disaster zone. But for these residents, it is too late. Unfortunately, half of our people, perhaps 90% of our people, drowned, this resident says. It is a genocide. Streets in the eastern Libyan city are lined with bodies. Outside the hospital, dozens are waiting to be buried in mass graves and many more will soon join them. At least 2,000 people have already died and officials are bracing for that figure to soar. The number of missing people are, is hitting 10,000 persons. Uh, so far. The flooding has been likened to a tsunami. The aftermath is apocalyptic. 25% of Derna was wiped out by the collapse of two dams and four bridges. Satellite images show how the water destroyed everything in its path. Residents had no warning about the deadly torrent that was heading straight for them and they had no time to escape. Oh. The government in the West has promised to put aside political conflicts with its rivals in the East as both administrations seek specific support. We don't need food, water, medicine or even manpower, Libya's Tripoli-based Prime Minister says. We need assistance retrieving bodies from the sea. The humanitarian needs are huge and much more uh, beyond the uh, abilities of the Libyan Red Crescent and even beyond the abilities of the, of the government. Three Turkish planes carrying aid and search and rescue workers have now arrived in Libya. The US has also promised emergency funding. It will be days, maybe weeks, before the human cost of this disaster is clear in a country that will struggle to recover. John Paul Gonzo for 10 News First. Hi, in the Morocco's Atlas Mountains, hope is now fading of finding any more survivors from under the rubble following the weekend's devastating earthquake. Search and rescue teams are still digging through what remains of homes and villages, but signs of life are few and far between. The death toll stands at almost 3,000, but that is expected to rise as more buildings are cleared and the missing are found. Morocco's King Mohammed VI visited some of the injured in his namesake hospital in Marrakesh and donated some much-needed blood. A series of huge storms has broken over Spain's Mediterranean coast, bringing flash flooding and gale force winds. This tree was blown onto a car in Valencia, trapping the driver and passenger under tons of splintered wood. Winds blew this sports stadium apart, forcing the children inside to shelter behind the counter. These storms come just a week after another system swept over the country, killing three and causing widespread damage. U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has finally bowed to pressure from his right wing and declared an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. House Republicans have accused the U.S. president and his family of corruption and an abuse of power for months. They claim he made billions of, or rather millions of dollars from bribes and kickbacks through his son Hunter's business dealings. You know, the bank records show that nearly $20 million in payments were directed to the Biden family members and associates through various shell companies. Democrats have responded angrily, saying the investigation is politically motivated. Far-right Republicans have been threatening McCarthy for months, refusing to vote for an upcoming spending bill unless he approved the inquiry. U.S. police seem no closer to capturing an escaped murderer in Pennsylvania, but sightings of Danilo Cavalcante are growing. He was caught by one homeowner stealing a gun from his garage. The owner fired a pistol at him, but Cavalcante escaped. He also stole a pair of shoes and some clothes from another home in the same neighbourhood. Cavalcante escaped from prison almost two weeks ago by simply climbing out and is believed to be only moving at night to avoid detection. 
A Van Gogh painting stolen in a brazen smash and grab three years ago has finally gone back on display after being returned in a shopping bag. The Parsonage Garden in Spring was torn from its frame while the gallery near Amsterdam was closed during COVID and promptly disappeared. It was handed in to an art detective earlier this week, wrapped in a pillowcase inside an IKEA bag. It suffered some scratches, but experts say it can be easily restored.